By the middle of the 20th century, antibiotics and antiseptics were in common use and had dramatically lowered mortality rates among women and children. Couples married young and had children quickly, which resulted in a demand for a reliable contraceptive that would free women from constant childbearing so that they could take advantage of the new opportunities opening up for themselves outside of the home, not to mention the population boom at the time. In 1960, the first oral contraceptive molecule called norethindrone emerged. This has evolved into what we call the pill. At the time, the pill caused much controversy. It was even a struggle to gain legal access to information about birth control. In the initial decades of the 20th century, just to give out information on contraceptive was, in many countries, a crime. Some feared that the pill would wreak havoc on morals and sexual behavior, while others claimed it would cure the social, sexual, and political ills of the day. Many also saw the pill as a magic bullet that would avert the explosion of the population bomb. By the 1930s, public acceptance of birth control was increasing. Health clinics and medical personnel were involved in prescribing contraceptive devices, and laws in some places were beginning to change. Before norethindrone was discovered, women have tried various remedies in hopes of preventing contraception. Some remedies were straightforward, such as consuming brew teas of parsley and mint, of leaves or bark of hawthorn, ivy, willow, wallflower, myrtle, or poplar. Mixtures containing spider's eggs or snake were also suggested. Fruits, flowers, kidney beans, apricot kernels, and mixed herbal potions were other recommendations. At one time, the mule featured prominently in contraception, supposedly because the mule is the sterile offspring of a female horse and a male donkey. For male sterility, it was believed that the consumption of the burned testicles of castrated mule would be effective. Some even thought mercury poisoning would be an effective means of attaining sterility. Not surprisingly, these bizarre and deadly attempts at contraception did not work. Norethindrone is part of a group of compounds known as steroids. You may have heard of steroids because it is a common chemical name used today that is applied to performance-enhancing drugs illegally used by some athletes. Keep in mind that while some drugs are definitely steroids, other compounds have nothing to do with improving athletic ability. All compounds that are classified as steroids have the same basic molecular pattern, a series of four rings fused in the same way. Three of the rings have six carbon atoms each, and the fourth ring has five. These rings are referred to as the A, B, C, and D rings, the D ring always being the fifth. In many molecules, very small changes in structure can have very large changes in effect. This is especially noticeable in the structures of the sex hormones. The male sex hormones, androgens, the female sex hormones, estrogens, and the hormones of pregnancy, progestins. Taking a look at testosterone, the principal male sex hormone, and androsterone, another hormone, there is very little difference between the two structures. Androsterone is an oxidized version where a double bonded oxygen atom has replaced the OH of testosterone. A similar oxidation process changes an OH on estradiol into a double bonded oxygen when comparing female sex hormones. It is interesting to notice just how structurally similar the male hormone testosterone and the female hormone estradiol are. Just a few changes in molecular structure make an enormous difference. A pregnant woman does not conceive again during her pregnancy because a continuous supply of progesterone suppresses further ovulation. This is the biological basis of chemical contraception. An outside source of progesterone or progesterone-like substance is able to suppress ovulation. Now there are several problems with the use of the progesterone molecule as a contraceptive. Firstly, progesterone has to be injected. This is because if taken orally, it reacts with stomach acids and or other digestive chemicals, which ultimately reduces its effectiveness. Secondly, natural steroids occur in very small qualities, and extraction is just not practical. So what is the solution to these problems? Artificial progesterone that can be taken orally. 
For artificial progesterone to be possible, a starting material is needed where the four-ring steroid system with methyl groups at set positions are already in place. This means that the synthesis of a molecule that mimics the role of progesterone requires large amounts of a second steroid whose structure can be altered in a laboratory with the right reactions to get it to function the way it needs to. Synthesis of the first birth control pill was sort of a surprise. The chemists involved in the process had no idea they would produce a molecule that would promote social change give women control over their lives, and alter traditional gender roles. Russell Marker, an American chemist, contributed much work to the development of the pill. His original goal was to find an affordable route to produce a steroid molecule called cortisone, but he ended up producing a contraceptive molecule, which is still used today. As Marker attended the prestigious Rockefeller Institute in Manhattan, he found an interest in steroids particularly in developing a method to produce large enough quantities to allow chemists to experiment with ways to change the structure of the various side groups on the four steroid rings. After leaving Rockefeller Institute for Pennsylvania State College, he collaborated with the Park Davis Drug Company, where he further experimented with steroids. He used the roots of the sarsaparilla vine to produce large quantities of steroids that he needed for his work. Using this plant was effective because the saponin from the sarsaparilla plant consists of three sugar units attached to a steroid ring system, which in turn is fused at the D-ring to two other rings. Marker figured out that in order to obtain the steroid ring system from the sarsipogenin, he had to remove the side grouping circled in this diagram. This process produced the basic four-ring steroid system that made pure synthetic progesterone chemically identical to that produced in the female body. The removal of the sapogen side grouping from the steroid system is still used today in the multi-billion dollar synthetic hormone industry and is called the marker degradation. Marker also discovered that the Mexican wild yam differed from the sarsaparilla sapogen by only an extra double bond. This led him to want to set up a laboratory in Mexico and use the abundant sources of Mexican yam to generate progesterone, since it was cheaper. Unfortunately, the major pharmaceutical companies had no interest in that idea, and so Marker entered the hormone production business himself. He left Pennsylvania State College and moved to Mexico City in 1944, where he established his own pharmaceutical company called Syntax. He also established another company called Botanica Max. Sadly, Marker ran into many problems with his fellow chemists as well as the financial aspect of his business, which led him to totally remove himself from the field of chemistry altogether. By 1949, he destroyed all of his laboratory notes and experiment records. But today, Marker's research is still acknowledged. He made the birth control pill possible. In 1949, Carl Gerasi, a young Austrian immigrant, joined the Syntex research facilities in Mexico City. Next, the company wanted to find a way to convert the now relatively abundant progesterone from wild yams to the cortisone molecule. This synthesis required 32 steps and was very costly, but using the marker degradation, Jurassic could produce cortisone at a much lower cost. He did this by attaching the double bonded oxygen at carbon number 11 on the C-ring. All in all, Carl Gerasi successfully produced cortisone from progesterone in a total of only eight steps. His next project was to create an artificial progestin, a compound that would have progesterone-like properties but could be taken orally. Carl had no intention on creating a contraceptive pill, though. At the time, progesterone was injected and used in large doses to treat women who had a history of miscarriage. Jurassic believed a carbon-to-carbon -carbon triple bond would allow the molecule to maintain its effectiveness when swallowed, and that the removal of a methyl group seemed to increase the potency in other progesterone-like molecules. In 1951, Jurassic and his team created a molecule that was eight times more powerful than progesterone and could be taken orally. It was named norethindrone, the nor indicating a missing methyl group. Carl is now known as the father of the pill.
Margaret Sanger, the founder of the International Planned Parenthood, was jailed in 1917 for illegally giving contraceptives to immigrant women. Catherine McCormick also helped to smuggle contraceptives in order to help women control their body and fertility. They worked with Gregory Pincus, a specialist in female fertility, to produce a safe, cheap, reliable contraceptive that could be swallowed like an aspirin. Eventually, a Chicago-based pharmaceutical company, G.D. Searle, had created a molecule very similar to that synthesized by the chemists at Syntax, and after testing the molecule on over 2,000 women in three different countries, the clinical trials of oral contraception were a success. The failure to prevent pregnancy rate was around 1%. In 1957, the drug was approved by the Food and Drug Administration. It was called Envoid and by 1965, nearly 4 million American women were on the pill. The pill has greatly impacted society, allowing women to control their own fertility. In the last 40 years, the birth rate has dropped and women have gained more education and have entered the workforce in unprecedented numbers. Norethindrone was more than just a fertility controlling medication. It sparked the beginning of an awareness, not only of fertility and contraception, but of openness and opportunity.